Hello everybody and welcome back to the part of the Praying Mantis tutorial where we're going to render the Mantis in the Blender internal render engine. So good old PI is not obsolete yet because for example for organic materials it is still more suited than the unbiased renders I think. LuxRender has the scattering material now but um, still subsurface scattering in Blender is still very very good. So um, let's have a look at how this scene is created. We're going to go over how the lighting is produced. It's uh, sunlight coming from here and a backlight for the translucency. And uh, there is a single lamp point light which is only specular so that uh, it produces these nice specular along the eyes because the eyes are actually a little more specular, have more specularity than the rest of the body. And we're going to solve that using a couple of maps. So uh, in order to distribute the material properties across the material. So you can see here there's a couple of black and white maps that are um, distributing the attributes across the surface. If that doesn't make any sense to you, it will in a minute. And uh, let's just have a quick look at the scene. We have here the backlight I was talking about and you can see that it crosses the petal right here but uh, it, if you have a look, I'll just change to a nicer view. There we go. No background images. If you have a look at the material settings of the spotlight, it does not cast any shadows. No shadows, so the light will travel through the petals and hit the, mo the praying mantis at full power and thereby illuminating these translucent parts of her. And uh, just so there is a natural environment. I also put a sun lamp in with a ray shadow. Um, the soft... Um, the reason why I don't really see the harsh ray shadows is actually that um, I took them off in the compositing. Uh, I toyed around with uh, ambient occlusion a lot. It increased the render times incredibly and then it gave me some very weird results. So um, if you want the shadows back, I can show you how, but for now I'm going to leave them out. And we're going to, in this example, it's uh, fairly important to um, get the different passes in the compositor and add them manually. So you can see here, uh, this is adding the specularity, this is adding the shadow, and this is adding the ambient occlusion. So um, this is so uh, the reason for that is I have now full control at how strong these values are composited over the node. But uh, that's for the last part of the tutorial. Okay, let's choose a suitable um, setup. That one seems nice. Okay, and let's have a look at how the praying mantis material is composited and originally I used nodes for this but uh, during the during the redoing of this tutorial I figured out that actually without the nodes it did look better so I'm going to do the normal setup and then I'm just going to quickly show you how to add the material nodes the way I did them before okay so this is a subsurface scattering material and we're going to create that from scratch so since Mantis SSS already exists, I'll just call this uh, already exists as well, it doesn't matter. And uh, I'm going to add a texture, and I have these textures prepared already. And this texture is going to be the diffuse. Mm, that's the wrong one. Um, diffuse. So um, the diffuse map is just the colors. So um, if you only export the diffuse channel, all you see is colors and a little bit of shading, but no specularity, nothing. So all this needs to do is influence the color of my object, and that's fine. So the next one I'll use is the translucency map. So uh, I went ahead, and maybe you've seen that in uh, the preparation tutorial, I painted on the praying mantis different parts. 
and um, I can actually okay sorry for the pause but this took me a little bit you can see now that the praying mantis has a translucency map and all the white parts are supposed to be translucent so the feelers the palps here and the legs and of course the middle gray part is semi translucent okay so I got this texture by painting it on actually with ver um, uh, sorry texture paint and um, this translucency map of course is supposed to influence the translucency of the material and since it's black and white I do not want it to affect the color and uh, 0.25 is enough and um, if Blender has a black and white image that of course works but usually or by default I should say the uh, image you give Blender is a gradient. So for example if you have if you add a blend texture this is a little X coarse you can show the alpha and you can see it's going from white to black but also from white to alpha. So if you were to use the blend texture then this would mean full specularity and this would be no specularity influence at all but uh, if you're using an image without an alpha channel or an alpha channel that you don't want to use for this spe uh, specific property you'll have to click RGB to intensity so if you enable that then of course Blender will take the white parts to be 1 and the black parts to be 0 and everything in between okay that's the translucency and um, of course I forgot I need to change this from generated to UV because I did take the time to unwrap the mantis so we should make use of that because otherwise it will be all over the place then I have a specularity map and this is basically the same thing I painted the eyes of the mantis white and also added some specularity over at this uh, leg here but that was just for testing purposes okay again we don't want the color to be affected but we want the specular to be affected intensity increase of one which is quite a lot but I do want this very uh, strong spec over here and also I want to increase the hardness because right I'm going to leave the hardness at 50 which is a little bit like plastic but it worked very well if I had the um, specularity map included and I had this on a 0.35 intensity last texture I'm going to apply is a um, just had to check if this is recording last texture I want to apply is a normal map and I got this normal map by sculpt by increasing the um, multi res excuse me sorry uh, I uh, used a multi res modifier on the praying mantis and actually sculpted the grooves and everything into the praying mantis body and then baked the normal maps you can see parts of that in the preparation and there's also great tutorials about that online so uh, what you end up with if you do that is this uh, magenta and cyan um, map oops that's the grasshopper okay that's the right one I have to there it is okay now you can see this uh, cyan to magenta mapping of the normals and this is called a tangent normal map giving blender information on uh, where the light is coming from and a much more accurate information on how these grooves are bent as opposed to a black and white bump map which is sometimes works just as well but usually the normal maps have a much more accurate and clean result or give this result okay again UV don't forget your model will look very weird if you don't check UV and uh, as you can plainly see I should uncheck color and check normal and since this is a subsurface scattered object the normal map will be very very weak so um, you can imagine that in a very solid and hard material if I put a scratch into that or a dent or something 
you will see it a lot more than if I put a scratch into a very soft and translucent material. So I'm going to put this to minus 0.5. That looked the best, I think. Um, and one more reason because the why this is so strong is because normal maps are parts of the shadow pass in Blender and you can see I turned down the shadow pass to a factor of 0.2 so this minus 5 is actually going to be multiplied by 0.2 so divided by 5 again so it's at 1 again so uh, getting a little ahead of myself let's have a look at some of these settings okay uh, I used a ramp for the diffuse channel because I found that uh, this ramp just made the material look a little bit softer and um, uh, this is exactly what I want. I want a soft praying mantis. So all I did was uh, get the diffuse channel check ramp and we're done. And also I left the hardness at 0.5 and you remember we have a specularity map so we can almost turn off the specularity. I left it at 0.03 which is very very weak but um, it's fine for an organic material like that and uh, even though I have a translucency map which indicates that the legs are supposed to be very translucent I still want the entire body to be translucent as well so I'll put this up to 0.3 to the overall translucency okay now let's check subsurface scattering and I usually choose one of the presets and then uh, modified from there and I thought that cream would probably uh, be the closest thing to a praying mantis surface out of these um, presets that you can choose from and um, I modified this a little bit I put the IOR which is the amount of scattering once the light has passed through the surface um, I put that down to 1.2 sorry 1.1 where am I 1.1 there we go and the scale I turned up to 0.2 and um, to be honest with you I can't predict what these values do I can't tell you oh of course you're gonna need a 1.4 value there and then everything's gonna look a lot better I honestly have to toy around with these values and then do a lot of test renders in order to get it right because those settings are in my eyes um, not very intuitive but uh, that's normal because that is a very complex method on how light behaves once it passes a organic surface so um, the great thing about uh, subsurface scattering is the dimensions of cheating it allows because you can just uh, if you don't have enough backlight or if your situation doesn't um, allow you to put enough backlight in you can just pretend as if there was more backlight so I can set this to a very high 5.5 and that is actually part of why the legs are this translucent because I'm pretending to have a backlight of 5.5 I usually put this very high even though it's a cheating value but still it usually looks very nice so I guess those were all of the settings. Um, if I press J I can open a new slot. You see we have eight slots here and this was slot number seven. And uh, if I then press render I will uh, fill another slot and I can still switch through this slot and easily compare my render results. It's a very nice bottom button to have. And uh, one more thing maybe um, about this blossom here. I also painted the um, blossom and the stem here. I added a particle system on top of that, but actually I don't think the results were that great, so I'll turn this off. And um, this is the flower. It's a very normal material with a subsurface scattering preset of cream, that's about it. And um, the more interesting part is this velvet part of the blossom and um, since Blender doesn't have a velvet material and I'm very very fond of the velvet materials of the unbiased renderers like um, Cycles and Lux um, there is a way to get sort of close to that and that is the Minard 
or however this man's name or guy person's name is pronounced. I'll just call it Minert, because that's looks Greek, I'm not sure. And um, if you choose that, your model will or your surface will go towards the direction of velvet. And uh, I left the specular at Cook Torrent. I um, toyed around with this new one. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, um, but uh, it looked it looks kind of tunish. Uh, so it's sort of similar to tune. You actually have these. Um, if you if you use this uh, method on both, you get uh, sort of an intermediate between the Cook Torrent norm and Lambert normal and the tune shader. So it's a nice new addition. But um, yeah, this is the velvet part of the flower, and um, the petals are actually the same thing. All I did was the um, put a texture on them and put the subsurface scattering to cream. All right, so um, let's open a new slot and give this a test render. I'm going to pause and uh, wait till it's done. Okay, now that it's rendering, we can already see parts of the picture. For example, you can see that there is no normal map and no specularity on the no model at all. The reason for that is that I separated them. While it's rendering, I'm going to show you how. Um, you have to go over to the layers over here, and uh, then you have all the different passes. And each pass that you add will appear as a little node over here, as a little output node over here for example if I want um, oh maybe I should not do that <coughs> if I for example wanted a motion blur I would have to enable vector and then I get a little blue output node that says vector and um, over here you have the passes that you can uh, prevent blender from pre-composing so if you uncheck the camera then the output uh, node will be visible and you can use it but it will not automatically be put into the um, original image so if you want to put it into the original image there is usually a node that aids you to do so for example the shadow map that you will get as an output is black and white uh, normally and um, of course if you want to add black to an image and ignore the white channel you need to have the transfer mode multiply which is this one so multiply ignores white and adds black and add or screen do exactly the opposite they ignore black and just add a uh, color uh, that's um, brighter than black they will add to the image this node will add to the image and screen will do the same as add, just a little weaker. And uh, we can mute these nodes by pressing the letter M on the keyboard and we can then compare how it would look like uh, without the nodes at all. So I'm going to pause this until it finishes so that we can have a look at the material or um, the compositor settings. Okay, if you uh, want to have a look at those um, passes you can always grab yourself a viewer sorry enable backdrop and then uh, connect for example the shadow pass with the viewer and now you can see that here there's a really weird thing going on here I have not figured out where this comes from or how to prevent it but for some reason a reason I'm not sure why but I like it um, the if you set this to multiply even if I increase the factor no actually if I increase the factor you can plainly see this but once I go on a factor below 0.7 this becomes almost invisible so um, one more thing about the shadow you can see that the subsurface scattering part has directly to do with how the uh, material produces shadow so once I increase the shadow pass, you can actually see the subsurface scattering disappearing. So, and if I turn this down again, you can see how the praying mantis gets translucent again. And uh, the more I turn this down, the more translucent the praying mantis gets, and also the more the normal map will disappear. And I can see that there is 
too much specularity on the praying mantis. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's have a look. Um, the intensity of 0 0.03. Let's put this down to 0 0.02. And um, let's see how the map is influencing. Uh, sorry, I need a specularity map. There we go, here's the problem. The specularity map is not set to UV. So this is something you could do immediately after you applied the texture and don't worry, in uh, cycles and lux render UV is the standard method. Okay, so um, we'll ignore the specularity for now. We can of course decrease it by using this node, but um, then I'll decrease the specularity on the eye where I want it as well, so I'm not going to do that. And actually you can see where we're out of luck. The eye is exactly the part that didn't get any specularity. Okay, so now if I... Uh, you can see that I took a Shift A color mix node and then set it to add in order to get this node. And then I connect the uh, image to the above and uh, the specularity to the below spot because um, this is reversed if you're used to layer-based um, compositing like After Effects then this might seem reversed to you but it does make sense because Blender calculates from top to bottom. So first this image pass is calculated and then um, afterwards the specularity is added to it because the specularity is further down in the hierarchy and um, that means if you're using a factor here it would mean that wherever the factor is white I'm um, sorry the factor map that would mean wherever the factor is white the lower one gets visible okay I did the opposite with a shadow I mean it's basically the same um, workflow, but uh, this is a color mix node that I set to multiply. As I said before, multiply ignores white and darkens your image. This was the ambient occlusion, but first of all ambient occlusion got me render times over half an hour for a normal picture, and also it uh, did look really weird, so uh, in the end I decided to leave it out. And um, now let's get to the defocus node. If I unmute this, you can see um, after a little bit. All right, the viewer is still connected. So, of course, the backdrop that you can see here is connected to this viewer. This is this backdrop. Okay, now you can see that the eyes are. Uh, oops, you can zoom in with V and Alt V over here. And if you hold Alt and middle drag, you can. Um, reposition the image. So you can see that the eyes actually that's uh, not too bad. If you um, decrease the threshold over here then the eyes are starting to get a little bit transparent which of course is not what we want but if you increase the threshold one of course is 100% so um, you can see a bit of um, banding. So over here we have, if I decrease the f-stop, um, this is going to be more apparent, I guess. Let's make this really extreme to show you what... Ah, okay, I should have waited a lot more. Uh, whoops, one is enough. Of course, the more you blur, the longer it takes, because this is a bouquet type of blur, which takes very long to calculate, so I'm going to up this to 3 again. And of course, 3 is... Uh, this f-stop is according to uh, photography, so this represents the opening of the aperture, and uh, the wider the aperture, the more depth of field you get or the more blurred your background will be, sorry, and then um, 
this is 1 divided by this number, so the lower this number, the higher the blur. So I hope that makes sense, but this is what it's like in photography. And now you can see the very, very strong banding. We can get rid of the banding by uh, pulling down the threshold, but once we pull down the threshold, we also get more of these artifacts over here. And let me just uh, zoom this out to 1, so the artifacts are not that bad see what one actually looks like okay um, yeah this is one of the major problems with the defocus it produces very jagged edges and you can see over here that if we set the threshold up to one then this not blurred part will be more visible and this blurred part becomes kind of not blurred but it looks more like it's transparent so um, rather than setting the threshold down to a complete zero, which would make the most sense because it would make the give you the um, uh, smoothest transitions, I usually leave it up at point one, so I can still get rid of some of the uh, weird transparency that is not really uh, intended. I'll increase the f-stop again, so I have less blurring. That looks a lot more natural and. Um, if you want to get rid of these um, jagged parts, you can enable the um, you can enable the sorry uh, full sample anti-aliasing. And if you put this to 16 and full sample, your render times will probably increase threefold. But your Z buffer, which is um, responsible for the depth of field will um, go up significantly. Uh, I mean the, the, the uh, Z-path pass will be anti-aliased and then your uh, those jagged edges will disappear even though you have the defocus enabled. But be aware once you uh, render the full depth, uh, the full sample and you change these settings afterwards your sorry, your uh, jagged edges will reappear and you'll have to re-render it. So, in the end, the last node I had was these curves and uh, usually, uh, again, I should probably connect the viewer to the curve so you can see the difference. Um, the sigma formed curve will increase your contrast because it um, brightens the bright areas and darkens the darker areas so um, this is sort of a standard method of increasing the contrast of a picture. And I guess this is a little exaggerating, but um, this is basically it. So um, to show you how the nodes work, because in the German version I actually used the nodes and then I got this result and liked it better, I will um, create the node material for you. So if you're not interested in Blender material nodes, that was it. You can now turn it off, but I'm going to use render nodes. So I like to have the nodes in the first spot. So I'm going to um, press 2 and make this a single user and call this nodes. And uh, if I now enable uh, go to the material nodes over here and then enable whoops that was not too clever nodes I should check the use nodes not the X you can see that blender creates an input and an output for us and uh, the input is empty so the output is black that does make sense and let's for the input choose SSS now you can choose um, you can choose your nodes over here to be the input and I guess most people do that but I once ran into trouble doing that because it was sort of a circular reference so the nodes were trying to influence themselves and that led to a problem and I just decided okay I'm not going to use the nodes anymore as their own input and I think I used this, uh, the wrong SSS. Yes, that's the right one. 
SSS.001. This is the result of doing this tutorial over and over. I get many different material names. Okay, the second one I want is, and I'm going to use the preset now, or the one that I have already made up. It's the uh, mantis.002. The reason this is green is, once you use a mix node, that's weird, once you use a mix node and it doesn't behave the way you want it to, I make one of the materials green and the other one red so I can see exactly where which material is. My screen is doing some very weird stuff. Okay, so um, I'm at the right node still and this is still at subsurface scattering.001 okay so um, I'll press shift D in order to duplicate this node and here I get the mantis.002 and the reason I'm stagging them over here as well is you don't need to do that but I can quickly change them if I want to so um, if I want to change the textures or the subsurface scattering, intensity, and so on, I can just quickly click on here. And then there's one more material, and that is the mask material. And I'll actually uh, change this. This is the translucency map. Now, if I wanted to create a material that's more translucent and mix it with the overall praying mantis, I would use the translucency map. But what I want to do is the um, and I'm going to make a new texture, call this image or movie and open the um, textures and there is a head mask there it is and this again is a black and white mask that um, that will that is the head painted on because the head is of course a more rigid material than the rest of the body because this is a predator and it will eat insects and sometimes these insects fight back so if it was to have a very soft head that would not work and I'll call this uh, head mask and um, I'll click on shadeless also uh, it's already enabled also of course UV again and um, color to one but that's uh, standard okay so now I can add a fourth material and this is going to be the aforementioned mantis.002 and go back to my nodes material and uh, I'll duplicate this one more time and this is going to be our mask material So the uh, mask material is sort of the same thing as the mask texture in cycles or a um, mask layer that you could use in the uh, scene compositor and the only difference is that this material is shadeless so um, it's um, getting mapped, the texture that we want is getting mapped to this shadeless material and we can then use the shadeless output to be a factor. So if I use a color mix node I can drag this into here and drag this into here. So um, I have the material here is the body and this material is the head and this material is white where the head is supposed to be. So if I connect the um, this one to the top, it will be uh, it will be uh, calculated first, and then wherever this here is white, the second one will be composited on top of it. So um, this material is the mass the node setup for the praying mantis. It's not that complicated, but there's one more pitfall. Since this material is not subsurface scattering and the subsurface scattering has the backlight cheat of 5.5 this material will be darker and it will be very visible that the head has a different material so I had to increase the intensity and toy around with that quite a lot until I got matching 
matching um, brightness of the material and um, so I want to skip that part and just use my preset material and uh, as I said I like this setup better anyways so uh, that's it that was the blender internal renderer for the praying mantis tutorial and I hope the good old BI does not die out for a while and uh, even though I'm starting to like cycles more and more so thanks for watching and goodbye